You know, this game never fails to amaze me. Look at this. Because it's daytime, the spider isn't aggro, but the creeper's trying to pathfind. <laughs> Do you think it'll blow up if we get too close? I think so. Hello everyone and welcome back to Greg Tech New Horizons. Episode 11, version 2. And why is this version 2? Well, you're going to see some things around here which might make you think you've missed an episode. And well, technically you have. You see, the first version of episode 11 has been deleted. Completely scrapped. <laughs> uh, but we're going to press on here with version 2. So previously we did manage to finish off this diesel system, crafting our first few MV machines. We also of course expanded out this base ready for MV, and we built the first of our ore processing systems over here. But yeah, first of all, let's go over some of the changes around this world. So the first idea for episode 11 was going to be all about this kitchen over here. As you guys know, the more variety of foods we consume, the more extra hearts or bonus hearts we get. And as you can see, we're now on green hearts, which is like 30 extra hearts. Oh no, according to the food journal, it's only 28 hearts. And I had so much fun with this, but I realized when I started recording the episode, it really wasn't great for the episodic format. Let's get ourselves some vegetable soup, some pot roast. It was basically just me hitting cows and eating food, <laughs> which is fun for me. Uh, there was a lot of item collection for this. There's the next heart. So I decided to switch it over to a live stream format instead. I appreciate all of you guys hanging out. We got some frog's legs, some cooked crab. Hopefully we can get up to blue hearts actually. 36 till the next bonus heart. I don't know if we can make it with this, a lemon bar. And if you're wondering the reason why we're hitting the cows like this, one of the downsides to the healing axe, which in my opinion actually balances it out, since it gives passive hunger regeneration when you're holding it, you can't actually attack any mobs with it. Otherwise you instantly lose saturation like we are here. And the rate that you lose the saturation is quite significant, which actually works out to our advantage when we want to consume a, a bunch of foods here. Garlic chicken, lime yogurt, pistachio ice cream, we're gonna get this heart any second now. There it is. I guess we've got a nice and even 30 bonus hearts now. We might as well eat what we have. We have a Mick Pam, which I'm assuming refers to Pam's Harvest Craft. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So yeah, I'm feeling pretty full with all the calories we just consumed. I think it's time that we move on from this. It was super, super fun for me trying, trying to collect all the foods, but uh, I realized probably not so fun to watch. So what about version two of this episode? Well, the first order of business today is to upgrade our tools. In fact, the eagle eye amongst you might have already noticed some changes with our equipment. We crafted up a material called vanadium steel. Cooked in the blast furnace is one of the best items that we can currently make for our tools. So we have a vanadium steel sword blade and vanadium steel pickaxe head. And we also put it on the hammer here as well. We have a vanadium steel hammer head. We are also going to swap out our excavator to vanadium steel. We also need to upgrade the shovel here, which is also going to be vanadium steel made in the extruder. And yeah, you can see that correctly. That is 192 seconds. And in fact, the hammerhead took 1536 seconds in the extruder. That was a true Greg Tech moment right there. Vanadium steel will massively increase the durability of our tools, which is very nice for having to keep down the repair costs. However, we can also augment that with Damascus steel. Damascus steel we can buy now that we've unlocked MV. I think there's a spare, th yeah, there's, we got a spare three here. And Damascus Steel is going to take the durability from 7,305 all the way up to 17,905. We are at this point also going to finally upgrade the Lumber Axe and we'll put the Damascus Steel on the shovel. We already have it on our broadsword and on the pickaxe and of course on the hammer. We need to also upgrade the Lumber Axe. However, there is actually a quest reward here in, uh, in the MV chapter for upgrading the Hammerhead. We get a free Lumber Axe and an MV loot bag. You're kidding me. <laughs> Some levers. And now we're over 13,000 on the vanadium steel lumber axe. Not too bad. I don't think we're missing anything else after this. Now this does switch our repair material to vanadium steel, but we have a decent amount backlogged here. And because of the higher durability, it means that we don't have to repair quite as often. Yeah, I think we're just waiting on this extruder. There it is. And that completes the upgrade of the full suite of tools. Besides the crossbow, but we can get to that once we hit HV. This thing is still quite decent actually for the point that we're at in the game. So mission number one already off the list. A lot of the hard work was done in version one of this episode though. And just in case any of you guys are curious, here's the full list of tool materials that we're rocking. So speaking of the tool materials, in I think basically every episode of this series, I'm always talking about going mining. And there's only so much mining I can do. <laughs> Especially when things spawn in different ore veins and you have to target specific veins for specific materials. 
So it makes it very hard to gather more than one material at once. And one of the things we're actually running low on right now is iron. I've been very diligent to keep the blast furnaces running for steel. So actually steel is not really an issue for us right here, as you can see. We're almost running out of room to store it. However, at this point, we actually have sufficient technology to unlock the automatic miner. This thing, the good miner. There is also an LV version, but I find that not to be worth it because of the fortune bonus and the range. So it seems we're going to be missing some pistons here, which do need some small aluminium gears. And similar to steel, I've also been building up a decent amount of aluminium here. And last episode when we made the extruder, I mentioned about all of the extruder shapes. Well, I did go ahead and craft all of these between episodes. The extruder is a very versatile machine. Yeah, with the extruder, we can actually make the gears one to one. Whereas previously, we had to use this horrible recipe here, two rods and a plate. And in fact, the extruder also gives us a cheaper way to make rods as well. I believe the rods are now one ingot to two rods. Whereas before, it was one ingot to one rod. So not only is these MV machines much faster than the LV equivalents, they also take the materials much further. And because of how good the MV machines are, we're also going to make the MV batteries today and more MV machines. Ideally, we go for the assembling machine. Alright everyone, so it's been a couple of hours for me and I did craft a miner, it's been placed here in the twilight forest. I hope that it's finished by now, we got it on an iron vein. And that is a very respectable amount of resources right here, that is awesome. It looks like it also pulled up some twilight forest gems. Let's see, it still has diesel in the engine, which is a good sign. Yeah, let's actually immediately remove this thing and we can place it on a different vein. We do have to use the dolly to pick up the chest. We don't quite have access to the compressed chest yet. So the cool thing about the miners is that they do take reduced power meaning that they only use 32 EU per tick for the MV version. And normally MV power is 128 EU per tick, right? And so the benefit for that is that we can actually get away with using an LV combustion generator to power this thing. And we're going to profit off of the increased fuel efficiency of the basic combustion generator at 95%, compared to a 90% fuel efficiency on the MV version. So it helps us save a little bit of diesel, which is important at this step, because it's definitely not a resource that we have an infinite amount of. So all we have to do is point the combustion generator at the miner, give the miner some mining pipe, give it a diamond chest. Oh yeah, and we do have to cover this. If this gets wet with the rain, then it's going to explode. Fill the generator with some diesel. I did bring a decent amount with us. We can use the cells to increase the, the buffer on the generator. Lights are on and it should start to deploy the mining pipe. And I think it goes layer by layer in a 33 by 33 radius. And we have this on a cryolite vein, which is something that we need to keep making aluminium. All we need to do is load the chunks, give it a waypoint. I'm going to name this appropriately, uh, Miner MV1. I've also actually made a book and quill because last season I actually lost a few of these miners. <laughs> they were on other planets and I didn't know where to look for them. So this time around, we're going to clearly mark where they are. So MV Miner 1 is in the Twilight Forest doing cryolite. Is that how you spell cryolite? I think so. Yeah, and that's basically it. We can just leave that to do its thing. And we can work around the base while passively generating resources, which is awesome. All right, we have arrived back at the base. I've got all the ores processing and we're ready to tackle the MV chapter. And as you saw there, I was doing a bit of preparation, quite a lot of preparation, actually. And uh, the main thing I was working on is actually circuits. Check this out. We got almost two and a half stacks of LVs. And at this point, we still have to use the LVs to make MVs. So actually, we're going to move this along in the, in the chain a little bit, the MV batteries and machines. And we have to first make a few more MV circuits. First of all, though, let's do a little circuit 101. So there's this really neat page in NEI. It's not quite as complex as it first may seem. The top of this chart represents the first tiers, for example, ULV, LV, MV, HV, etc. And the further down you go, the more expensive or the higher tier of circuits you get. There's also multiple circuits at the same tier. So all of this line is LV circuits, then all the MVs, then all the HVs, etc. Right. And the reason there's multiple circuits is because 
The electronic circuit is more expensive to craft than the integrated logic circuit. But in every single case here, you need the first circuit to craft machines to make the second tier of circuit, which is cheaper. So the goal when you're doing circuits is to unlock the next tier. So for example, we, we need to unlock the HV, the advanced, and then we use the advanced circuits to craft machines to make the processor assembly, use those to craft more machines to craft the nanoprocessors. And that is the cheapest form of making HV circuits to make all of the HV machinery that we need. So pretty much you want to get as far down and as far to the right hand side as you can with the circuits. So we want to make these good electronic circuits to make all of our MV machinery, right? And by the way, we can ignore all of these things. These are all for the circuit assembly lines. Not something we have access to at this point. But yeah, we need circuit boards and that comes in the form of the phenolic circuit board, which is just some wood pulp and glue. Very easy, we've been doing that in the assembling machine. But we need to turn it into the circuit board, right? And to do that, we normally use this, this recipe here with gold wire, which is basically four gold per circuit board. However, we can cut that in half to two gold per circuit board if we use sodium persulfate or iron three chloride. So that means we need to get into a little bit of chemistry today. So we're gonna make the MV chemical reactor, our next MV machine. This is our last two MV circuits as well. So I think this is a good decision. It should be a quest, there we go. Oh yeah, and I did also craft a few more MV combustion generators. Previously, we only had one and I was swapping it between our diesel system, which seems to be out of oil, I think. Yeah, I did just go and collect more of this, but it's uh, kind of annoying having to go and collect it manually. There's basically zero options for us to do it remotely right now. So that's just something that we have to live with at this point in the game. But yeah, the combustion engine used to be there and it used to also power an electrolyzer, which sat right here. The electrolyzer has been moved next to all of the rest of the MV machines. And I've been electrolyzing rock salt, which can give us chlorine. I think actually what we're going to do here is move this extruder and we'll put the chemical reactor here. The extruder can go on this side of the wall. And I have a feeling most of this will get changed around quite frequently. But yeah, we have two options here, either iron three chloride or sodium persulfate. And we're gonna go for iron three chloride. And this is made with iron dust, very easy. Empty cells, very easy. And hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is hydrogen and chlorine. Chlorine we get from the rock salt. And this should work inside the chemical reactor here. Need to make sure we check the circuit number because chemical reactors have probably the most recipes in the game. It looks like it's circuit one. There we go, we're making ourselves hydrochloric acid. And you know, we're gonna make as much of this as we possibly can. Let's make sure we get a muffler upgrade for this actually. So the hydrogen we've also been getting out of the diesel system. The hydrogen, if you'll remember it, we can get from centrifuging brown limonite and yellow limonite, which is actually the, the ores that we got out of the twilight forest. So I hope you can see how everything comes together now. This gives us hydrogen, it gives us oxygen cells, and it gives us the iron dust. All three things we actually need here. Aha, uh -huh, there should also be quests for all of this stuff as well, right? <laughs> we are kind of jumping the gun a little bit here. Yeah, I guess we're supposed to make molten plastic first, and for that we need polyethylene. Oh, quest book. Okay, this is going to send us down quite a big rabbit hole here. But you know what? I'm ready to jump in. Let's do this. This is also going to help us with our quest for MV batteries too. So polyethylene is a process we're going to set up with LV machinery. It's both easier to power and easier to craft, and it doesn't need to be particularly fast at this point in the game. So we're gonna need two more LV chemical reactors, one LV distillery. I suppose we'll need a way to power the machines as well, so we'll use our combustion generators. Uh, we're short a few steel gears. We can do that in our extruder though. All right, we got the gears. This should be our combustion generator. One should be enough if we implement some batteries. I think we have some spare. And of course, we'll need our battery buffer. Let's go for the four slot version. Perhaps a tiny bit overkill, but uh, I'd rather make sure it doesn't run out of power. What else do we need here? We need some fluid pipes to move fluids around. And we're probably missing a bunch of other stuff here, but we'll, we'll grab that as we, as we go. So we are gonna make this setup over here next to diesel. And there's a couple of reasons for that. The first is that we need access to the steam supply. And the second is that we need access to light fuel. So polyethylene is gonna cut into our production of diesel, but it's not gonna be fully automatic and we're gonna control manually how much we use. And besides, even if we wanted to, we couldn't make this fully automatic at this point. The first step to polyethylene though is making regular ethylene. And there is multiple different ways we could do this, but I've chosen we're gonna go through the, the oil route. So the first thing we want is a chemical reactor which is gonna grab the steam. I'm gonna move this over one block. We also need the light fuel at this stage and we're gonna severely steam crack light fuel if we actually have any here. Let's actually soft mallet this so it doesn't make any more diesel. Yeah, so the chemical reactor is receiving the steam from the pipe. When you put light fuel inside with steam, 
You have three different options. You can either lightly, moderately, or severely steam crack the light fuel. You basically react it with varying amounts of steam and it will give you varying different amounts of liquid when you distill it down. In other words, the severely steam cracked light fuel will give us the most ethylene whenever we distill it. And that is going to be on circuit three. We need to hook up the power. We're going to keep using 4x tin cable. And I guess the next step is the distillery, which we can put below. That's going to automatically output. And then it's going to go into another chemical reactor here. And just for simplicity, we can put the combustion generator right here so we can easily manually fill it with diesel. Then that can go in the battery buffer and just connect to this cable here. And, I, and look at that, I did actually bring wire cutters. Plug in the batteries. And we need muffler upgrades, that's right. Easy peasy. So a severely steam cracked light fuel in the distillery has 11 different outputs. Eventually we can make the distillation tower and get all 11. But at this point we have to target the specific chemical that we want, which is ethylene on circuit 10. Awesome, this thing is already powering up. That's going to automatically output to the chemical reactor. And to make polyethylene from regular ethylene, all we have to do is mix with oxygen. How are we going to get that in there? I guess we just implement it manually since we get it out of this uh, centrifuge. We can just take some of these oxygen cells. And this should be on circuit 1. And we should get ourselves polyethylene. Ah, wait, 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 wait the quest. <laughs> we need four cells of ethylene. Hold on. Hold on a second. Oh yeah, and we do also get a tiny pile of carbon dust from the distillery making ethylene. So we can just put that into a barrel below with a conveyor module. Alright, but after some patience, we should have ourselves four cells of ethylene. And a request. We need to grab 91 cells of oxygen. And 41 cells of polyethylene. That's going to be a lot, but I, I think we can maybe manage that. Oh yeah, that really is going to be a lot. All we have is 13. <laughs> oh boy. Alright, there we have it. Molten polyethylene. So most of the time polyethylene is used in its fluid form, but occasionally you have to solidify it into polyethylene sheets. I've added another little LV fluid solidifier, and this is actually going to be used for the next tier of circuit boards, the plastic circuit boards. There is the quest for the plastic sheets. That may or may not be something we get to this episode. Let's focus on the MV machinery right now though. So yeah, now that we have the plastic, the quest for the Iron 3 opened up. And along with that, we've also now unlocked the ability for us to make MV batteries. Polyethylene, battery alloy, and copper cable. 80 seconds in the assembler. We should have ourselves some batteries here. Alright, so we're back here at this oil pump and I'm very seriously considering upgrading this thing to MV since we now have the added demand from polyethylene. Actually, hold on, how long is it until we can get this multi block? I think it's called the drilling rig. You know, that's actually cheaper than I remember it being. What is this, cobalt gears? It actually seems doable, probably not something worth rushing straight away, so I think we're going to hold off on the LV pump. We just picked up more than 64 buckets, almost 100 buckets of oil here. We should be able to make it work until we have the multi-block. The oil actually isn't too far away from our base. And we also got ourselves some cashew nuts on the way there. We should be able to get some extra Pam's foods. So the cool thing about the kitchen is you can basically craft anything so long as you, ha you have the ingredients in a cabinet that's connected. And yeah, we're pretty stocked up here right here. <laughs> there is so many foods I've crafted over the last few days. And it looks like we can get some cashew butter, celery and peanut butter, which is uh, another unique food, cashew chicken, watermelon jelly sandwich. Uh-huh. And the first blue heart. Awesome. And there's a tiny little enderman here. I don't know if that was a bad idea or not. I mean, hey, we're tanky now, right? And I suppose while we're here, maybe I should explain why this building exists. But honestly, I, I can't. <laughs> and the reason for that is because I don't know. And that's also part of the reason why the episode got scrapped. I really didn't like the way this was turning out, honestly. I'm almost at a point where we're going to demolish it. I think the biggest problem is it has no purpose, and I really didn't think through it enough. The kitchen is going to stay no matter what, but this whole part out here, it's very poorly thought through. And this is a lot of blocks and a lot of space for some animal farms, which could realistically just go in a pen outside. We are also still in the early game of New Horizons, so using resources on things like this is probably not the best of ideas. But hey, I'm happy about the most important part of the base, which is our machine room. I'm, I'm really liking how this is turning out after some time working here. Anyways, we were able to craft 9 MV lithium batteries, which can hold 400,000 EU each. And to go along with that, we've got a 9 slot MV battery buffer. So if you guys have seen the previous episodes, this basically follows the same logic as the LV batteries. 
Only this time, instead of using 4X tin cable, we have to use the MV cable. And again, there is many different cable options, even for MV. And the one we're going to go for is annealed copper. Annealed copper is different from regular copper in that it's been oxidized. At least I think that's the right description for it. Basically, you have to cook it with oxygen. And you can either do that in the blast furnace or in the arc furnace. We're going to invest in an LV arc furnace, which should be a quest. There it is. So the arc furnace, as far as I'm aware, is the only single block machine that requires two amps. So copper plus oxygen, hopefully we have enough power right here. I hope the cable loss isn't too significant. It looks like it is going though. We're making annealed copper, awesome. And I have been saving the oxygen. I haven't voided any oxygen. I've made a few more tanks over here. We are gonna need quite a bit of annealed copper for this since we need 8X cable, since we have a bigger battery buffer. We seem to have quite a few quest rewards here. Maybe we should start claiming some of these. Uh, I think here we'll take the loot bag. We'll take the 32 empty cells. Why you would ever take brown limonite over a loot bag? I've no idea. 64 more empty cells, we'll always take those. Oh nice, flawless emerald. Flawless emerald is actually the thing preventing us from getting more MV miners since it requires the sensor. And the flawless emerald is a chance output from small ores. Either that or you make it in the laser engraver, but this is HV. It's quite nice that the quest book gives us more actually. Okay, all in all, 11 MV loot bags. Our inventory is full, I think mostly with these blocks. What else did we get here? Some glass, some polyethylene, lithium, bone meal, capacitors, a capacitor bank, which is actually full of RF. Yeah, besides the capacitors, that's really not great. All right, so along with the batteries, I also did craft up some more circuit boards. We got 32 here using the iron three chloride. We actually don't have any more gold to make this happen for the gold foil. I'm pretty sure we took it all. Yeah, I used it all already. I think next episode, we're gonna look into a way of getting more gold. For right now, we're gonna make up as many MV circuits as we can possibly make. And it's time that we start to fill out the array of MV machinery. And similar to the jump from Steam to LV, we are still gonna be making use of these LV machines, even though we're gonna end up crafting most of the equivalents at the MV tier. The vast majority of them also unlock cheaper and newer recipes, which we couldn't do previously at LV. For example, the MV mixer unlocked the diesel recipe. But the thing is, when you overclock a recipe, it's 2x the speed and 4x the power cost. All right, so it seems that we were able to get 35 MV circuits to work with. That's really not too bad. I think that's gonna take us pretty far today, actually. We're also missing some magnetic steel rods. Which one is the polarizer? This one. We are gonna need two conveyor modules. We also need the robot arms, which means we need pistons. I think it's just two. Yep, there we go, there's two robot arms. You're gonna hate this. <laughs> You're gonna hate this. And I think now we're just missing the machine hull. The rest of the items we should have by now, and that should be, wait, make sure the quest is unlocked first. All right, and finally, we have ourselves the MV Assembling Machine. Avengers Assemble. Uh, that's gonna go right here for now. Let's keep crafting, let's keep crafting. We can also pick ourselves up an MV Bending Machine. And our preparations are starting to pay off right now. I think I would also like to get the Laser Engraver, which we are definitely gonna need for the HV circuits. So for that, it's uh, more of the same, except we need an emitter. We haven't made an emitter yet. We need some electrum rods. I'm sure I made some of those for the miner. And we need an ender pearl. We should have one. We have six. One more machine hull. One MV emitter, which should be a quest. Oh, more copper cable. I was making some of that, but we have run out of that quite a few times here. Okay, one MV emitter, which should be a quest. And one preemptive precision laser engraver MV. Yeah, we haven't unlocked a quest for that yet, but it's only a retrieval task, so we should be able to break the machine and pick it up to unlock the quest. Okay, is there any other machines that we want here or that we need? I guess we need the chemical bath. The chemical bath is going to allow us to do a few things, mainly upgrade the coils on the EBF, which is something I want to get ASAP. So we need a pump. It's so nice when you can just shift click things and you have all the materials, but this is our, literally hours and hours of resource preparation. But this should be our chemical bath. And our quest. I think we also want to get a wire mill. We seem to be waiting on the wire mill quite often. How expensive are these things? It really doesn't look too bad. We need some more electric motors. And we are out of cooper nickel. Didn't I? Oh, we have some cooper nickel in, our, in my inventory, actually. Didn't I make some more cooper nickel, though? I'm sure we have some more batch crafted in here. Or is it in the storage room? Ah, here it is. We got an extra five stacks. We're going to wire mill all of this. Oh, wait a second. We do have some more gold foil. It was in the hopper above it, and I <laughs> I turned this thing off because this is full of, oops. Yeah, I flipped the hopper the other way because this was full of sulfur and raw rubber dust used to make uh, rubber. 
I guess we can get some more circuits here. Yeah, yeah, this is going to be awesome. All right, so we have enough for 15 extra electric motors. Oh, we seem to be running through our aluminium at an alarming rate here. <laughs> We're down to our last two stacks. Unless maybe I left some more in the blast furnace. I think I'm going to have to cook some more of this between episodes. Oh, there's still some more here. Okay. The power of batch crafting right here. Let's make another stack and a half of plating. And this way we can get the wire mill. I don't think this one is a quest though. This is just for us, just to speed up the, the recipes. So we also finished crafting and covering the AX annealed copper cable. Now remember, this is a nine slot battery buffer, but AX cable. So we have to make sure we don't fill the last slot with a battery. Because as with LV, every battery we add gives it plus one amp of output. So we want eight amps going into an eight amp cable and we can stick the generator on top. I think we'll probably have to craft some more of these things. One is definitely not gonna be sufficient. But yeah, once it fills the internal buffer of all the machines, it should start to fill the batteries up. Let's maybe grab a few more cells of diesel for this. And nothing is starting to burn here as well, which means we should be in the green. Oh yeah, we also had this combustion generator here. I forgot about this one. I guess we can also stick this on the battery buffer. And if you're wondering why we use slightly larger chests beneath the machine, it's, well, for two reasons. One, you can't open regular chests if they're beneath a machine. And two, at least in 1.7, you can't force chests to not connect to each other. In the newer versions of the game, you could do this and shift click, but no matter what we do, we can't place a chest here. It's like the old school mechanics. So yeah, you can't stack chests next to each other. Oh, nice, we got some extra quest rewards. Some more MV bags. We got a free circuit, a free two circuits. Okay, we got five more bags here. <laughs> it actually just gave us a crossbow. Uh, okay then. A crossbow and a regular bow and a muffler upgrade and a bealizer. Okay, that is some good quest rewards right there. I think we got the, the diodes and the good circuit boards. That is not too bad at all. I'll take that. And I think this also marks a really good wrapping up point for this episode. We managed to craft a decent amount of the MV machinery. We got the automatic miner. We got polyethylene automated. We got the first blue heart, and I'm not really sure exactly what's going to happen with this. I'm pretty sure though that I'm going to start demolishing it, honestly, and I'm, we're just going to completely rethink this area. Sometimes, you know, sometimes these things happen, and, <laughs> and yeah, I, I don't really want to leave a big scar in our world. Sometimes you, you try and you fail, and that's exactly what we did here. Honestly, I don't really think it was that big of a loss other than time, but, you know, I enjoyed myself building this thing, even if we are going to tear it down. I'm like 95% sure we're going to tear it down. I also apologize for my voice this episode. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, yeah, it was kind of difficult for me to film this. Anyways, that is going to do us for today. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode of Greg Tech New Horizons.